In the latter half of this lesson, we're going to talk about resonance, both what it is and the structural elements of molecules that tip us off to the importance or relevance of resonance to the molecule. And I wanted to begin with a short video reintroducing this idea of electron sources and sinks, which we saw a little bit of in the Introduction to Curved Arrows video. The reason we care about electron sources and sinks is that resonance active molecules, molecules to which resonance is relevant, contain electron sources adjacent to electron sinks. So we need to be able to recognize these elements in Lewis structures. Electron sources consist of visible elements of Lewis structures such as bonds or lone pairs. Curved arrows begin at these structural elements. In order to make decisions about what constitutes reasonable electron flow, we have to answer the question, what makes a good or strong electron source? Strong electron sources tend to have negative charge since the donation of electrons away from negatively charged atoms would leave them neutral. And they tend to be associated with atoms of low electronegativity, especially carbon and nitrogen in the nonmetals, since these elements don't hold on to their electrons very tightly and thus can donate their electrons more easily. Electron sinks are atoms that accept a pair of electrons, and these are often electronegative atoms. Contrast that with the low electronegativity condition on electron sources on the left-hand side of the slide. And curved arrows end at these structural elements, and there are a few different ways that we can make this happen. For six electron building blocks, we can add a pair of electrons to the building block to satisfy the octet rule, and so you'll see electron pushing arrows indirectly at these structural elements. But we can also end electron flow on atoms within bonds by breaking a bond and sending the pair of electrons in the bond to one of the two atoms, typically the more electronegative of the two, so that the atom with partial negative charge re receives a full negative charge in the resulting products. We can do the same thing with a double bond, which leaves one of the two bonds between X and Y intact, or with a triple bond, and in these cases, as in the single bond case, the atom that accepts the electrons is typically the one that's partially negative in the original bond, so that it ends up with a full negative charge, which it's relatively comfortable with because of its electronegativity in the resulting products. Strong electron sinks are associated with positive charge and elements of high electronegativity. Contrast this with the sources. High electronegativity elements in an organic context include things like the halogens, such as bromine, chlorine, and iodine, but we also see oxygen commonly acting in this role as an electron sink. 